Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This will be the third video of our backyard transformation. In this video, I'll be going over the rebuild. If you haven't watched them yet, I have two videos out. One is the first initial walkthrough of the backyard, and the second video goes over the de demolition and clearing of the trees. I created a playlist, so I'll link it down below, and you can watch it all in order if you'd like to. First, I'm gonna go over uh, the rebuilding of the deck. There was a lower section of the deck that we got rid of. We kept the upper st structure of the deck, and I got rid of the old railings and I salvaged material from the lower deck in order to rebuild the upper deck. The upper deck structure was in actually pretty good shape. The only problem was it had sunk in a little bit so it wasn't level. I took some of the posts and uh, deck blocks holding the posts up from the lower deck section and I added them to the new one with a new post that helped support it at the right height and got rid of the old ones. I reused the old ones to help frame out the skirting but I put new new posts on deck blocks at the right height for level. Initially there was only like four posts on deck blocks holding this up but I added another two around the perimeter and I added a new beam structure going down the center with new posts as well. For decking we just went with pressure treated five and a half inch deck boards but we used the we used the camo fastening system which drives the screws in on a 45 degree angle on each side and it helps hide it comes with a specialized screw with a small head on it that uses a Torx bit. The system is great if you'd like to not see the screw heads along the top of the board and it's great if you like the clean look of not seeing any of the fasteners but it's also great if you plan on staining or finishing the deck because in a few years when you have to come back and pressure wash and sand the deck potentially you don't have to worry about uh, hitting any of the screw heads with the sander because they're sunken below on the angle so if you plan on building a deck and one don't like to see the screw heads and two plan on staining every couple of seasons then consider the camo fastening system uh, one few suggestions I can make is the camo fastening system only comes with one unit in, in a kit and it comes with several bits. I recommend if it's in your budget to buy at least two of them because it helps keep it spaced out. There, it's an automatic spacing when you clamp them on the board and I find if you have two or more you can clamp multiple down at once and send in more than one screw. It, it helps keep your spacing consistent if your board isn't straight. The first time I used the camo system we only had one of the units and it uh, felt like it took way longer than it should have so it fit it in your budget I would definitely recommend buying at least two. I'm definitely going to keep using their system in the future because I, I like the way it works and I like the final product because it looks nice and clean but it depends on at the end of the day it depends on your budget. Moving on to the border and the sides of the deck we ended up doing a border with 2x10 to give it a nice framed out look. I've seen a lot of decks where they'll skirt the sides with a simple lattice. Uh, our client has a young daughter and a dog and his basement tenants also have a dog and I find that a lot of houses we go to we end up repairing lattice when it's at the skirt of the deck so we ended up doing like horizontal deck boards we had, we did a, a two by eight along the bottom and then deck boards on top and they end up hidden behind the 2x10 wrap around frame along the top and I think it looks really sharp and it gives like a nice almost feels like it gives the deck a lot of weight it looks like a proper structure I, I don't think lattice looks that good if you ask my opinion I've also done this with uh, vertical slats as well but uh, cl client opted for the horizontal look we also ended up building a new privacy fence on the neighbor's side we didn't have access to dig the first hole where we wanted to put our first fence post so we ended up digging our first fence post beside the landing I built and we just built a new privacy fence back towards the existing privacy fence. Make everything cohesive. Anywhere you sit on the deck you are surrounded by the privacy fence and then the yard is just regular fencing. This allowed us to start our first post hole in a spot the, the post hole digger could access and it all worked out in the end. When it comes to the, the railing on the perimeter of the deck we just inset posts into the framing of the deck and used these big structural T30 screws to hold them in place. I think the T30 GRK screws have been like one of the greatest innovation when it comes to starting screws. I think they're way better than any lag bolts, carriage bolts. I mean they all have their place but these T30 Torx head screws that are structural and outdoor rated are beautiful for this. We route uh, the square hole in each deck board then 
and the post slides right into the structure and it all looks nice and seamless. And then the, the railing, we just did a simple two by four top and bottom stretchers and then the classic square pressure treated pickets with a deck board on top of the railing to keep the look clean and simple. A lot of times I find design, clean, simple designs are underrated. We didn't end up doing the stairs right away because we wanted to complete the patio first so we knew the proper heights for our staircase. We couldn't put the, we couldn't figure out what type of stringer we needed right away until we could use the, until we had the proper heights from the deck top to the patio floor. So in the meantime, we started digging the holes for our fence posts. We decided to go with uh, pre-made fence panels from Home Depot. You could buy these uh, sections of fence that are exactly eight feet long by six feet high that come with the lattice and the slats that the client was looking for. That's the look he was going for. When you take into account the cost of the materials and the labor to build sections individually, it almost works out to be roughly the same. These panels are probably just under $200 Canadian and they are easy to modify if you have to build a smaller section. They come eight feet long, but if I have to cut one down to six feet or four feet, etc., it's not that hard to do. You just mark it, cut the whole thing down with the skill saw and add the two by four on the end of it. The real advantage of these is logistics of this alleyway. We could just pull the trailer in and unload nine or ten sections and all the nine or ten sections and a bunch of posts and the whole fence is there. No need to be bringing in a whole whack of two by fours, a whole whack of lattice, a whole whack of fence boards and all the brackets and fasteners to put it all together when we can just show up with the whole system ready to go. Once the holes are dug we can just start putting in fence. The only thing you got to be careful for with these eight foot eight foot sections is your posts have to be exactly eight feet apart with these panels you have a huge advantage in the fact that you could set a post in and for our post we end up using uh, the Sika post fix which is actually a foam it's a two-part foam that comes in a bag uh, instead of concrete each Sika bag replaces two bags of concrete and like we just bought a few cases of it and it comes in a bag and you it's a two-part foam and when you split the middle and you uh, mix it for about 20 seconds and you pour in the hole the foam expands and fills the hole it saves a lot of labor it says uh, it's about 15 minutes before you can put any weight on it which I think is fantastic it's not like concrete where you might have to dig the holes and use the sono tube fill full of concrete and even with the rapid post that cures pretty quick this uh, this foam if you pour it tight to the post and it forms around it uh, helps also seal the post against the any water in the ground because concrete is impermeable and water will eventually come through it and slowly rot the post potentially it's also a great labor saver in the sense that you're not mixing up concrete or carrying con bags of concrete for that matter I could carry a whole backyards worth uh, this foam case and it only weighs about 20 30 pounds obviously there's some co cost contributed to this a few years ago before a lot of the prices skyjack these bags used to be about like 12 13 dollars and now they're up to 23 dollars each so at you know at this time concrete is still cheaper and before it was really close to kind of make it an easy decision but if you're not a fan of mixing concrete you don't want to deal with the dust or the weight or any of that the Sika post fix works fantastic back to the advantage of using these sections you can put your first post in with a level on it and hold it while the foam is setting up and within minutes the foam is already holding the post in place you don't have to add any additional bracing so you can just hold it for a little while level plumb and then you can walk away confidently knowing that that post is never going to move and then within 15 minutes I can screw the first uh, fence panel section to the first post and then I can actually drop the second post right beside the first panel, screw it in place, let a plumb, and then foam that hole, and then work my way down. After we work our way section to section, we can get a whole side done. Once most of the majority of the fence posts were in on either side, we left the back fence out for the next few days because it allows us to bring the truck and the trailer into the backyard, which is a huge advantage. We didn't want to block that off. It's really hard to make the, the turn in with the trailer with all the posts in the back. So we left that open for now and just use construction fencing every time we were off site. Now that the fences were up, except for the back fence, I ended up building a smaller gate on the house side. Whenever I do, whenever we do gates, there's two things that I like to do. One is the two posts that are adjacent to the gate. I always put a header across it. You always want to make sure the hinge side of the post never moves. So typically what we do in this case, the, the post on the hinge side, we made it a corner post by adding a header across 
across the top to the deck, which makes it super strong and that will never move. I shouldn't say never. It's always better to have like a almost a complete frame around it. Another tip is we always use this uh, metal bracket hardware kit that we pick up from Home Depot. It's by Pete. It used to be called like a no sag kit. It comes with the four corner brackets with bracing and the hinges are built into it and you just build the frame out of two by fours and then you can clad it with whatever look you're going for whether it's fence boards, deck boards, horizontal, vertical. You can do whatever you want once the frame is built. I like it because it's just a black uh, four corner bracket system and it's strong and the hinges are built in and it comes with the screws and everything. It is 100% worth the money. You don't have to worry if you're normally people do like a gate and they do like they do the diagonal slats or the X kind of the farmer's X that keeps everything nice and from sagging but these metal bracket kits highly recommend using them. So we moved on to the, the patio. It ended up being just simple 24 by 24 brick pattern concrete patio slabs and just to keep again to keep the logistics quick and easy we ended up using what's called the Brock paver base. It's a styrofoam based system where you don't need as much gravel or fill below your slabs or your interlocking or whatever. It only requires a few inches of sand. Luckily for us a lot of these Toronto Leslieville properties a lot of the ground is made of sand so when we dig dug out a lot of these posts we had a lot of sand left over on the property. Rock paver base is like a styrofoam puzzle piece that kind of overlay on top of each other. They have little grooves in it to let water go through and it replaces the need for five or six inches of limestone gravel or screening or whatever and you could just do a layer of sand make that nice and to your level and put this paver base on top of it and you also have the advantage of being able to walk on top of the paver base without disturbing the sand. A quick way that we find to level out our sand is a little bit old school of a system. We actually buy electrical conduit pipe and we lay it down on the ground at the heights we want and we put a level on it and we bring the sand to the pipes and we can actually screed our landscaping rake across the pipes to make the sand level with the pipes and then typically you just pull the pipes out after fill in the little groove that they leave with sand the cost of materials today you just go back and return the pipes once we had the patio slabs wrapped around the deck towards my landing we had the proper height for our stairs and we picked up the pre-made metal stringers and we actually found these uh, pressure treated treads that had a rounded front on them and never they must be must be a new thing because i haven't really seen them before but they've got a nice routed rounded front on them and so we decided to go with those and then you can just mount the stringers level on your deck and you can mount it to the patio slabs below and you're done quick and simple stairs now that the deck was officially finished and the fence was officially finished except for the back the final piece of the puzzle after the shed was built we put in the last final two fence section they were both just cut down we used the same eight foot sections and we just chopped them down to fit in order to have the eight foot gate in the middle and we used we ended up using the same anti-sag hardware with some beefy latches i really appreciate you guys tuning into the channel if you could hit that like button it really I'd really appreciate it. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. I'll put links in the description to the hardware that I like to use, all that fun stuff. Uh, the next video, uh, we're gonna be laying out sod in the backyard here. It's gonna be a huge transformation. I'm gonna do a final walkthrough. That'll be the final video of this series. So I think it's gonna look wicked. So please subscribe, please don't miss it. Once this job is complete, it's just a few small jobs and then we're back to the shop build, which I'm super excited about. We have to do some tree clearing around here and then the frame can go up. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't watched any of the shop build series i also have a playlist for that that i'll link down below i love these outdoor projects it's good to be working outside in the sun a little bit more of a rough carpentry thing it is good to get a bit of a sweat on and it's good to enjoy the summer here while it lasts in a few months we'll be complaining that it's cold so at the moment even on these super hot humid days it's hard to complain anyways uh, keep your eye out for the final walkthrough video please hit that like button consider subscribing thanks for watching bye